Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. Attorney John Deaton was live on national television today on Fox Business Network with host Charles Payne. And I want to share with you some thoughts about that segment. And I actually did transcribe the portions that were relevant. Well, all the portions were relevant. But specifically what I mean about when I say that is more so um, what had to do specifically with the SEC as well as uh, their case against Ripple. And of course, uh, Kim Jong Ginsler uh, now speaking about one cryptocurrency out of roughly 20,000 that are currently tracked by coin market cap anyway. He's willing to say that say what his personal opinion is on just one and it's Bitcoin. Uh, so I want to share with you all sorts of stuff, but before going further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. So a couple of things right off the bat here. You know that I always love to support those who are impacting the XRP community in positive ways. Well, who's having a more positive impact on the XRP community, and you could actually argue crypto as a whole, who's doing more than attorney John Deaton? There's a reason he has a massive following, but I wanted to encourage you, because I know so many of you are listening, you're probably already following him on Twitter, awesome, but uh, are you following him on his YouTube channel, channel Crypto Law TV? If not, I encourage you to quickly type in, uh, no, no spaces, just type in Crypto Law TV, and this channel, what's on your screen right now, this will pop up. I recommend you give him a quick subscribe, it's an easy way uh, to, uh, to support him and you'll definitely love the content. It's not that, so he doesn't post like content constantly, but when he does, you're, you're going to want to be on the receiving end of it. He puts out fantastic stuff and it's always fascinating to, to see his perspective. And I got to tell you, he comes off incredibly well on live television. My gosh, like talk about cool, calm and collected and just knowing all the facts and boy, does he know the facts. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you what, um, he knows the facts and circumstances surrounding the SEC versus Ripple case and also not a, afraid to share his opinion on it, it, what's happening kind of on a more of a macro scale and just kind of crypto in general. So I really enjoyed this. And so what I did is here again, like I said, I, went, I transcribed portions of this having to do more so specifically with the SEC versus Ripple case and uh, Kim Jong Gensler. Uh, but uh, a lot was said here. A lot was said here. And host Charles Payne, I think he did, a fine, he did just a fine job. He's, he's asking pointed questions. Went, went pretty damn well. Uh, so, so we kicked off this segment, Charles Payne did, by stating the following. To say we've hit a rough patch for crypto investors would be an understatement, however. it's uh, It's got the Dotards and the naysayers circling like sharks at as each day seems to bring more questions and even more bad news, now many are saying, hey, listen, this is just part of the curve. It's only natural when you have something revolutionary like this, but there are still some issues, including legal issues that seem like a whirlwind. Not sure yet. Uh, joining me now, crypto law founder John Deaton. I want to start with the SEC chair. This week, Gary Gensler made some co comments, and some aren't sure where he's putting Bitcoin, for instance. Did he say Bitcoin was a commodity? Did he say it's a security? And where does that leave the rest of these cryptos? So like, before I share with you what John Deaton's answer was on this, let me just say this. Um, and that's a fine opener that he had right there. But in a general sense, I just, I never see this anywhere in mainstream media. And I don't even see it enough, frankly, in, um, in, in crypto media. I do see it in crypto media, though. But I, I don't see in mainstream media anybody just tying together the fact that Crypto follows equities. So yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you, fair enough. He brought up the point that it's basically a bloodbath, bloodbath in crypto, and it is more volatile than other asset classes out there because it's in its infancy. There's not as much money, which means that volatility in terms of percentage change is way more dramatic, way more dramatic, obviously not denying that. But in terms of directionally where it's going, how come people seem to consistently miss that, that everything just moves in tandem? It could not be more clear. It's an indisputable fact. But here's what attorney Deaton had to say about this. Because again, the question here was, okay, Gary Gensler, he said something about Bitcoin. He's saying it's a commodity, is it a security? What's, what's Gary Gensler, SEC chair, saying about Bitcoin? Here's, here's attorney Deaton's answer. Well, Charles, thank you for having me. Gary Gensler came out and finally, after a year, finally said that Bitcoin was a commodity. But it took him a year to do it. And he didn't comment on any of the other cryptocurrencies, and there is a specific reason for that. He prefers there to be vagueness and regulatory uncertainty, because when there's regulatory uncertainty, it allows him prosecutor prosecutorial options, right? So let me just pause here to note a couple things I want to say about this. 
the, the idea of prosec prosecutorial discussion here and options, that couldn't be more true. Of course, the reason for ambiguity is that he can sue everyone in the crypto space into oblivion, and there's not going to be a stronger recourse since there aren't clear rules of the road. That's for damn sure here. But additionally, although, yes, Gary Ginsler did finally say his personal opinion about Bitcoin um, for the first time since becoming SEC chair. Now, if you go back to 2018, he said his opinion about Bitcoin. He said his opinion about Ethereum and XRP back in 2018. He said both are securities. And so th for the first time, he gave his personal opinion about any cryptocurrency. And if you fast or, or just go back in time, I don't know, a half year or so, um, I was highlighting comments from he's like, even with Bitcoin, he's like, yeah, I'm not really going to talk about individual cryptocurrencies, not even Bitcoin. I'm like, holy hell. Even Jay Clayton said that Bitcoin, in his personal opinion, wasn't a, wasn't a security. And finally, Gary Gensler did that. But, but here's the thing. He doesn't explain the rationale behind it. And also, this is just his personal opinion. This isn't some sort of legally binding incident. Incident. He's just saying, yeah, I, I, don't believe, I do believe Bitcoin's a commodity. I don't think uh, it's a security. Uh, but again, what do you do with that? Well, you can't do anything with that. Not really. Because if Gary Gensler, well, in the future, eventually at some point, he won't be uh, the, the SEC chair. There will be somebody else in charge, different leadership at the top. There won't be any rules in place unless something changes. And then what Gary Gensler had to say about it still won't matter, right? Just like when Billy Boy Hinman gave his Ethereum Free Pass speech in, in June of 2018. A lot of good that did. And then I think back to former SEC commissioners like Robert Jackson, who openly stated on video multiple times that the whole purpose of having people like Bill Hinman go out is to provide market guidance. That was the purpose of all this. Well, a lot of good that does when you have turnover at the highest levels of the SEC and nothing's officially in place. It means nothing. Now, in theory, if they were in charge forever, maybe that could somehow be used to some degree for guidance, but even then they're inconsistent because they still went after XRP, which satisfies the Hinman E3 Pass standards better than Ethereum even. So it's a bunch of gobbledygook as far as I'm concerned. But but that's what he's but that's what Attorney Deaton was saying here. That uh, there's a there's just prosecutorial options. That's the reason that he did this. And so this is the point where Charles Payne jumped in and he said, that gray area. He knows exactly what Deaton's said, talking about. And then Deaton says, yep, that gray area. And then Charles Payne says, I mean, listen, I'm on the security side, believe me. When I first got in the business, I found out about the gray area the hard way. Because particularly small, young, coming into the business, just starting a business, on the Wall Street side, there are no clear lanes but you think they deliberately leave these gray areas? And here's what attorney Deaton said to that. Oh, absolutely. Because if you provide guidelines, what do entrepreneurs and companies do? They meet those guidelines. When you keep it uncertain, it gives you options. For him to continue to engage in regulation by enforcement, that's, that's how he's doing it. I went on record to predict that He's going to sue an exchange or two by the end of this year and claim that they're selling unregistered securities other than Bitcoin, but he won't tell you which ones are securities. <laughs> and, and so I, I've talked about that prediction, and um, I think he's right on that. It, he, he may very well be right on the timeline, too. I don't, I don't know. Um, but in terms of whether or not that's going to happen, to me, that seems like a virtual certainty. Gary Genzer has made very clear what his opinion is. Because he said, how could you have 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 cryptocurrencies changing in your exchange, and you're telling me not one of them is a security? It's pretty clear that he plans to pounce. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's on multiple exchanges at once. Maybe it will just be one to start. I, I don't know, but it's going to come. It's, it's, it's going to start. And it would be kind of, in an evil way, comical if it's Coinbase. Not that, I don't want him to go after Coinbase or any exchange, but I'm just saying it would be funny only in the sense that the SEC had to approve the Coinbase IPO. Coinbase is a publicly traded company. The SEC had to approve it, and they knew what was being traded at the time. So if they do go after Coinbase specifically, I'm going to be like, what in the ever-loving hell? What in the ever-loving So I, wouldn't, I won't be surprised if they do it. Um, it's not that it would make logical sense or anything, but Attorney Deaton's hitting the nail on the head here. If you provide clear rules of the road, entrepreneurs and companies will meet those guidelines. Businesses, in a general sense, are not bad actors. The vast majority very good actors that just want to comply with law. Let me assure you this is indeed the case. I'm speaking as a 12-year entrepreneur myself. Founded my own company with my brother 12 years ago. Still running it. Of course we want to comply. That's, that's, that's normal human nature. If you don't comply, you get fined and or go out of business ultimately. 
So yes, you find some idiots, you'll find some bad, act bad actors on the planet, fine. But that's, in a general sense, not what's going on here. But then you have everybody in the space in the United States saying, we don't have that clarity. Of course we don't have that clarity. So it's it's not everybody in the space that's wrong. And you don't see these cries in, in, uh, in traditional finance. You don't, you don't see these complaints against the SEC in other aspects of business. It just happens to only be in crypto. An entirely new asset. Well, as a classic, go figure, right? But surely the SEC has been doing a bang up job to this point, right? Yeah, I don't think so. And so... Um, uh, Charles Payne then jumped in and he said, right, right, it's kind of hard to be ignorant of a law if the law doesn't exist. I, oh, I love that line. As soon as I heard him say that, I was like, ding, 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 yes, hitting the nail on the head, good sir. <laughs> Absolutely. How can you be ignorant of the law? How can you be ripple saying, ah, securities laws, I don't want to abide by them. We're going to go do our legal XRP stuff. No, <laughs> that's not what happens. How can you be ignorant of a law if it doesn't exist? Which is one of the reasons it shouldn't be surprising that even the SEC, with all of their ass hattery, not even they claimed that there were any instances of fraud. Uh, as far as Ripple or Chris Larson or Brad Garlinghouse, no claims of fraud. They're just saying they did something that was illegal, but there was no actual fraud there. These people are not bad actors, obviously. The SEC, they're the bad actors. And so Deaton jumped in and said, exactly, absolutely. And then Charles Payne said... It's one thing to say, oh, okay, I didn't know it was on the books, you know. And so, of course, to be clear, he's, he's referencing the law. If, 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 you, if you do something wrong, you didn't realize the law was on the books. Correct. That's one thing. But to claim that somebody did something illegal when there is no law on the books, the audacity to do that. And that is what the SEC is doing. It's all so crystal clear, though. And then Attorney Deaton said the following. It's disgusting is what it is. He keeps going on record to say these exchanges are selling securities. And then you ask him, which ones? And he won't say, because now we know from his comment that you just asked me about, he's going to go with they're all securities except Bitcoin, which makes this Ripple and XRP case extremely important. And then they did come around to uh, to the S the, the Ripple SEC versus Ripple case uh, just a minute or so after that, and I'm going to jump to that part in the part in the conversation. Charles Payne says, "So where is the Ripple case right now?" And Attorney Deaton said the following. The Ripple XRP case, and I'm glad you asked because it's something I'm passionate about uh, today, and and I want to make sure I get the number right. Uh, today we hit 68,250 people from 61 different countries around the world that have joined the fight uh, to fight the SEC in their overreach and government intrusion. And I want to tell you something. There's a couple thousand of them that don't even own XRP. They just feel like you do. It's disgusting what's happening. And then Charles Payne says, I did see the last time that there was anything from the courts that the CEO of Ripple said it's going exceedingly well. The notion that so many people want to see this succeed, whether you're an investor or not, it speaks to the idea of freedom, of innovation, of self-determination. And there are a lot of powerful forces out there that don't want to see that happen. And then Attorney Deaton said, absolutely. I think what's happening is the cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin, it's one of the few times in history where the individual kind of front runs the industry, if you will, and the hedge funds. And personally, I think that Ginzer's attack on crypto is to allow the hedge funds and the Wall Streeters to come in, crash the market, then they come in. And then Payne said, they do that to the stock market all the time, all the time. So let me let me say this here. This is an idea I've actually talked about a number of times over the years on, on my channel. It's the fact that when it comes to crypto, it's perhaps the first time ever, at least the first one I can think of off the top of my head, where there's a new opportunity to invest. There's a new asset class even here, right? And was it the institutions that jumped in first? No, it was the everyday man, the, the everyday individual out there like you and me. We had the opportunity. We're the ones that moved on it first, anyway. We we started investing in the crypto space before the institutions. Just regular people did. And that's not normal. You can think back to the dot-com boom and bust, my gosh. Yeah, retail speculators, they had their day, their, their movement under the sun. But it was institutional money that really got that rolling, and then retail followed. Whereas with this, who had the opportunity to achieve insane life-changing wealth, the likes of which humankind has never seen first? Uh, it was people investing in Bitcoin specifically in the earliest of days. And I still argue it's very early on right now, 
But John Deaton, he's hitting the nail on the head here. This is exactly true. Now, as far as the intent, uh, I've speculated on this before. I mean, my best guess is Gary Gensler, he's not doing anything for money more. He's filthy rich. Last I saw, uh, he's allegedly worth over $120 million. So it's only it's for money, not for not for him anyway. To me, it seems like it's got to be ego related. And he just wants to keep climbing and climbing. And um, I, I wouldn't mind the ambition if not for the fact that he's a terrible person as a result of all this. A squashing opportunity for everybody else. So is it to let his friends in specifically? Maybe. But he's, 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 he's got such an ego, it seems, that it could very well just to be to, to help him climb higher up the ladder. You know, he's, he's, he's going to be eyeing a higher position in this at some point in the future, don't you think? Because, again, he doesn't need to be doing any of this, but he sure as hell is. So that, that would be my suspicion. So anyway, I just want to say uh, John Deaton is amazing. We are so, so fortunate that he, he, he came in out of seemingly nowhere about a year and a half ago, just, uh, just started advocating on behalf of XRP holders. And I know I, I know I don't like to speak for other people, but I think this is probably safe. Like everybody in the space couldn't be more appreciative of what he's doing. And so to have somebody like that who can go in and speak on behalf of everybody in the community on national television and, and also for the greater good of crypto, which is important to me, like, to me, that's just incredible. Because, look, I am not a maximalist. XRP may be my favorite cryptocurrency and my largest holding. I, I make no secrets about that. But I, if this doesn't go well for XRP, I'm worried, okay, what's the next cryptocurrency I own that Kim jong Ginser is going to come after? Because you know it's going to be something, right? If, he, if they can't put a stop to him. So that's why I've always been hoping that Congress can come in with a heavier hand than they have to this point. And I, I mean, I still think that aspect's a matter of time. But unfortunately, the SC versus Ripple case, it's going to be settled or fully adjudicated before anything passes Congress that could potentially have any meaningful impact. <sighs> the wheels of justice turn slow, and Congress moves like a snail, which actually a lot of the time I like that, but <laughs> when it comes to the crypto stuff, um, I would really like to see some action on that, let me say that. As long as it's not bad regulation. You can get bad, trust me, you can get bad, you can get bad uh, regulation and legislation from, um, and, and bills that passed by, by Congress, so is what it is. Cool, cool stuff out there. So anyway, so, but yeah, I just wanted to share with you some of what he said and as along with some of my thoughts as well, but I'll wrap up here. I am not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Lambo.